Millions of people struggle with obstructive sleep apnea. Some don't even know it. And most think CPAP is the only option. The truth is there are effective alternatives. Have you ever heard of oral appliances? Hi, I'm Dr. Joseph Hulick. I'm a member of the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine. And in this video, I'm gonna explain oral appliances or mandibular advancement devices, what they are, who they're for, how they work, and the process from A to Z. Why does treating obstructive sleep apnea even matter anyways? Did you know that around 80% of people with obstructive sleep apnea don't even know that they have it? And left untreated, obstructive sleep apnea can have some pretty serious long-term negative health consequences and is associated with high blood pressure, arrhythmias, increased risk for heart attack, stroke, type two diabetes, decreased cognitive function, dementia, Alzheimer's, chronic pain, mood disorders, anxiety, depression, daytime accidents, kind of trouble focusing, relationship strain, and, and more. Dang, anything else? But at the end of the day, it makes sense, right? If you're not breathing well when you're sleeping, that puts a tremendous amount of stress on the body. And if you're not sleeping well, then your body is not able to complete all the functions that it needs to during sleep, which over time adds up. What are oral appliances or mandibular advancement devices? Well, they're custom made, essentially, mouthpieces that cover the top and bottom teeth that are connected and or engage with one another that helps position the jaw further forward. They are adjustable, meaning we can move them forward or back depending on the results that we're getting and whatever's comfortable for the patient. There are many different types of designs. Essentially, they all are going to do the same thing as far as moving the jaw forward and adjustable. The main thing is just picking the right design for each patient to optimize the chances of success depending on what their dental condition looks like. You know, if the teeth are crowded, rotated, they're missing some here and there, they might need some dental work down the road. So compared to the over-the-counter snore guards, which do work as well, the over-the-counter guards, of course, are going to be a more one-size-fits-all solution. They are more cost-effective. It's a little bit more difficult to actually have a pinpointed kind of location as far as how far the jaw is forward or back to get the results that we need to. In addition to this, sometimes patients feel like they use their muscles to try and keep them in or they just don't stay in very well. And if a patient is doing this and we don't know it, then it could be a little bit trickier to manage if they have any jaw problems or start to get some muscle soreness. So how do oral appliances work? Oral appliances advance the jaw further forward, which of course helps keep the tongue out of the way, but also literally changes the airway geometry, which can prevent and or reduce the number of obstructions that are occurring while you're sleeping. And of course, if you're breathing better, this should lead to better sleep, which in theory should lead to better overall health. One thing to keep in mind here is that not all patients are candidates for oral appliance therapy. So the good place to start is to ask your dentist or a qualified provider if you are in fact a good candidate for oral appliance therapy. So how do oral appliances compare to CPAP therapy? CPAP has been the gold standard for obstructive sleep apnea treatment, but not all patients want to use a CPAP or can even tolerate it. CPAPs work because they are essentially an airway splint. So uh, instead of changing the airway geometry, what we're doing is basically just forcing air down the airway to help keep it open. Almost like that connector tube for a bouncy house. You know, you've got the motor blowing the air, the bouncy house, and then that tube where all the air flows through. It's kind of the same thing. I thought about that, but set it up for my son the other day. This previously has been proven to be the most effective treatment form, particularly for severe cases of obstructive sleep apnea. What about oral appliances? So oral appliances, are a proven and effective first-line treatment therapy for mild to moderate cases of obstructive sleep apnea. They can be used in severe cases when patients are intolerant or just do not want to use the CPAP. And the big equalizer X factor here is the compliance. So on paper and over the long term, this, the CPAP and the oral appliances, they say are about equally as effective because patients are more inclined to actually wear the oral appliances over time when compared to the CPAP. Oral appliances can be more comfortable, portable, quiet, travel friendly, and just overall patient friendly. CPAP can be effective for the most severe cases of obstructive sleep apnea. It is a little more inconvenient. It might cost a little bit more too, but it's a proven treatment method. Quick note here, guys, as a dentist, it's not my job to tell you which one is best. You know, obstructive sleep apnea is a medical diagnosis. So you, of course, will work with your physician to determine what the best treatment method for you is. But the best treatment is the one that you actually are going to use over time to help manage the obstructive sleep apnea. In the description, I've included a PDF from the American Academy of Dental Sleep Medicine that reviews some of the myths and facts for oral appliances, particularly when compared to CPAP and all the literature and references that support the information that's in there. CPAP isn't for everyone. Oral appliances aren't for everyone. The best treatment, of course, is going to be a personalized approach. If you're getting an oral appliance made or even a CPAP, your provider will, of course, talk to you about some other things to consider or to help improve your sleep hygiene, such as your nighttime routine, what are your sleep hygiene habits, weight loss, positional therapy, 
and you know medications. There's a whole lot of other things to take into consideration here. And whoever's helping you with your treatment will discuss these things with you. The most important thing is to make sure your obstructive sleep apnea is being treated and not ignored because some of those negative health consequences can be pretty severe over time. Here's a quick example taken from one of the courses that I've done. For this particular patient, their main concern was just not feeling rested, daytime sleepiness. Their main score, the AHI, you can see there, that was basically 33. So that's severe obstructive sleep apnea. The patient did not really want to consider CPAP therapy and they would prefer to use an oral appliance or a mandibular advancement device. The appliance was made. After all the necessary adjustments, they did another sleep study, which moved the AHI down to six. So it didn't get rid of it completely, but moving from a around a 30 to a six is a significant improvement. The AHI gives us basically a numerical value to quantify how severe the sleep apnea is, you know, mild, moderate, or severe. And this helps so that when we're doing treatment, we're making oral appliances for patients, we're able to have a more quantifiable measurable amount to see how much we've improved things or what kind of success we've had. We of course take into account the patient's kind of subjective report as far as how do they feel? Do they feel more rested? How's their energy level? Are they feel like they're snoring less? Is their bed partner sleeping well? Just the overall life's improved since they're wearing this in addition to numerically being able to quantify that. So what's the process? Well, number one, consultation and screening. Ideally, when you come to the office, you would have a sleep study that's been done within the past two to three years, a referral from the physician and a prescription for an oral appliance. Number two, we then will do our dental sleep medicine exam, our records, get everything that we need to actually make your appliance. Number three, we will deliver the appliance and titrate or adjust it over the course of the next couple months. Number four, do a sleep test with the oral appliance in to confirm its effectiveness and that we've actually have achieved what we wanted to. Number five, ongoing care and follow-ups to make sure that you're continuing to wear your appliance and we are coordinating with your physician. So some common questions I get asked from patients. Number one, how much do they cost? Well, if you have no insurance, the sleep apnea appliance is going to start at around $2,500 and could go on up to around $7,000, which I personally think is high. But this, of course, is going to vary depending on where you live. Now, if you don't have sleep apnea and you just need a snore appliance made, these are going to be a little bit less, typically around six to $800. How long do they last? Well, typically about three to five years. They of course are under a lot of just wear and tear and stress being in the mouth, but on average, this is how long they should last. I have a lot of patients who have had them for much longer. Do they cause jaw problems? In short, they can. This is the number one kind of side effect of these types of appliances, but we do things to try and minimize or reduce the risk of this, such as, you know, instructing the patients with specific jaw exercises. We make a little morning occlusal guide, which has the original bite position for your teeth so they never kind of forget where home base is. This can happen, which is why it's good to see a dentist who has experience treating sleep and TNJ. Are they covered by insurance? Most medical insurances will cover these appliances. Of course, it's gonna vary depending on which type of plan you have, but they really are not covered by dental insurance yet. Even if they don't cover the appliance, a lot of times you can apply what's been paid towards the appliance toward your deductible. In addition to this, insurance typically will repay to have another appliance made about every three to five years. Who's a good candidate? Individuals with mild to moderate cases of obstructive sleep apnea or those with severe obstructive sleep apnea but just cannot tolerate or do not want to use a CPAP. What about for children? This is an interesting one. It will be a separate video about airways, tonsils, myofunctional therapy. For children, we typically don't really make these appliances and we try and do other therapies to help facilitate kind of the soft tissues growth and development to improve the breathing versus making an appliance. Oral appliances are a proven, comfortable alternative for many patients with obstructive sleep apnea and are indicated as a first-line treatment for those with mild to moderate cases. If you suspect you might have sleep apnea and you haven't had a sleep test done yet, be sure to check out our other video where we dive deeper into at-home sleep tests versus the in-lab ones and everything you need to know. If you guys got anything out of that video, please consider giving us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel and be sure to leave any questions you have in the comments below and I will get to them as soon as I can. As always, thank you for your time. We look forward to making more videos to help patients like you.